Hi and welcome back. In this video, uh, this is the series three of the OTA. And uh, today what we'll be doing is, uh, we'll see the OTA with elegant OTA out there. So this is one of the most easiest and stable way of uh, getting the things done, that is getting your OTA part done. This works exactly the same way as we have the web server, but here we are manually creating our uh, web page and the HTML part and so on, right? So kind of it, it becomes much little bit difficult to understand and so on. But yeah, if you understand this, then this is the best option you have it. Like you can really do a lot much into it. But OTA, elegant OTA gives you a lot much flexibility out there. It, it, it already has a very good looking page out there, which uh, really helps you in getting the things being done and so on. Uh, this also helps you to go ahead and uh, update or put a files in the file system of ESP32 just in case if you require any files inside your file system so you can also do that with it elegant OTA and doing absolutely nothing nothing absolutely nothing of the code out there just that you need to go ahead and update your uh, SSID and the password so let me tell you how exactly you can do this so very first thing is you would require multiple different libraries for this. So I have listed out all the libraries here. I'll share this all also in the chat box, in the comment section, into one single zip. You can just get all of these three different. So you want to have, you need to have an ESP async web server and you also require a async TCP out there. And you also would be requiring your async elegant OTA. So here is everything you have in this and this makes it really amazing. Or you can also go ahead and download each of this by cloning them. I'll download a zip out there and I'll tell you how can you import these libraries into your uh, RNA out there and so on. Once you have all of these three different libraries out here, you can, you can go back to your Arduino at them. So in the Arduino, what you have to just do is uh, go to the files and then navigate to the examples out here and navigate all the way down and you have something called an async elegant OTA, just get this async demo out here. You also see some of the examples with async uh, web server here and then you also have an example, yeah. So I'm not really uh, concerned with any of these right now because this will help me to create a uh, uh, handling a proper async web server out there, but I'm interested in async elegant OTA, so I'll just get into this thing. So once you get this, you will have a small little code out here because everything is being done in the uh, library itself so that's not really shown here to keep it simple and easy out there so you can just see this it works well with esp266 and also esp32 so that has been handled here and there are multiple different uh, libraries which has been included async uh, esp async tcp just in case if it is using an esp266 and if it is using esp32 it is using wi-fi and the async tcp out here so remember that whenever you want to have like a combination of two different boards you can use this can this way of implementation this will save a lot of time to you then it, you're also including the async uh, web server and the async elegant OTA. so this are uh, doing everything out there in the back end you're just going to replace your wi-fi name and the wi-fi password here and then starting the server at the port number 80 then pretty simple common things out here starting the uh, wi-fi connectivity and then waiting for it to get connected if it is getting connected that the server is on i'm just making a uh, quick response back out there as a uh, hi, this is a sample re response out here. And then calling the Ellingen OTA, beginning the server out there, and then has print server started. I'm not giving anything out here, nothing is required. This is all you require. Well, fine. So it looks quick also and simple also in comparison to the previous code what we have out there, right? But this would take approximately, let me show you like what is the size of a uh, size it takes here. Let me just show that to you also here. So it takes approximately uh, the total space. Let me just, that is very important out there so that you get to know like what is the amount of space you get left over for which you can go ahead and program your things. So it takes approximately 58% of the program storage. So you get remaining 42% for yourself. So let's say 40%, you cannot really do 100% of it. That would really uh, give it a bottleneck. So yeah, 40% you get it along with this. So along with this, you can have like whatever you modify it, you can have another 40% for yourself. So this is what we have into it. Let me just upload this code here firstly. So I'll upload the code on this. And once I've uploaded with this thing out there, we'll try to go ahead and then add a few things into it. it might be a blink and LED out there or something like that and see like what happens if it 
uh, I do an OT update with this. And also how exactly the web page looks in case of uh, a sync web server because this has to look a lot much better than the way we had done in the previous. So let us just wait for this and get it completed. Uh, my voice is slightly feeble out here, I think. So I'm just not well a bit. So I, I'm still trying my best that I can record it as better as possible. Don't forget to let me know in the chat section, like which one of the way you feel is more easy to go enough and like more stable enough so that like uh, I get to know what is your feedback into it. I prefer like uh, if I have to choose from a web updater and the async, then surely I'll choose an async OT itself because or you say elegant OT itself because it's really elegant and done neat and clean out there with very few and minimal lines of code here, nothing much and keeping your actual work a lot much. So it gives you a quick warning here, like async elegant OTA dot loop is deprecated. Please remove it from the loop. If defined, this function will be uh, removed in the later releases. So we don't really have it. I think so this is uh, for the previous version. So you can see that I don't really have any of those uh, elegant async elegant OTA in my loop here. So I don't really need to worry about this. As you can see this 53 line number and 54 line number here. I don't have this into my uh, quick, uh, not notice here, so I'm good to go with this. I don't really need to worry uh, anything about this. I'm pretty much good to go. So yeah, I'll click, uh, let it upload here. Yeah, it's uploading now and uh, let me just open my uh, seal monitor here. So I'll also clear this. So yes, it is connected because this has to be started and I need to go to this uh, web address. Fine, let me go to this web address now. And uh, if you just go to the web address, you see this, I have this one. So I have this page, I'll just, sorry. Yeah. I have a quick response which says, hi, this is a sample response. And this is what we are expecting to have when the thing starts. For example, you can see this server on. As soon as server on, where are we going? We're going to the slash and giving a text which says, Hi, this is the sample response. And this is what I'm expecting to have it. And that's what we have it. So now how do you update this? So you need to go to the path here, update. You need to go to the path here, update. And this will take you to the path wherein you can go ahead and do it. So since it looks pretty much clean and beautiful out there rather than the normal one. So async here and then you have a file system. You can upload the file to the file system or a firmware also. Everything is fine. And uh, uh, is going to from here to this is ready to that I need to choose a file here but before I choose a file let me do some modifications here so what I'll do is I'll go to the uh, white setup here and then define a pin here pin more and then I'll make the pin number two here and then I'll make it to output fine and in the loop here what I'll do is I'll just write digital right I'll make the pin number two high and I'll make a delay of 10 millis, 100 milliseconds. And again, a digital write of two comma zero, which is nothing but your low and I'll make it a delay of 100 milliseconds. So let me just upload this here and uh, well, not, not upload this, I'll compile a binary of this because I need to have a binary file of it. So export the compiled binary, it says I need to save this. So I'll just save this here. And this is the default file, so I'm not save that. So I'll just save this here, this way. And now I'll go back and sketch and compile this. Export the compiled binary out here. And this should compile the binary of this particular uh, sketch out here and which I'll be using then to go ahead and uh, upload it as a binary out there, and I should be going to have a quick output. So whatever you have functionality, whatever you have it, whatever it is. So with your existing code, what you already have it, you need to include this much in every single program if you want to have an OTA uh, functionality as normal as we had thought into earlier. So even here, you have to have both your device and your uh, source from which you're going to update into the same network so that restriction is still there you still cannot go ahead and update your device from anywhere 
So currently both need to be in the same network itself. So how can we update that uh, over the any network, like it can be disconnected to the internet and you're able to update that over any different uh, network from anywhere in the world. I'll be coming with that in the next video. So, but for now, that's pretty much uh, good to go ahead and simple and easy implementation because this goes very good with normal project and so on. So if you're doing such, you can prefer this uh, elegant OTA or to update it file systems. You can always go ahead and use this elegant OTA and that should really work amazing with this. It's almost getting done here. So I'll just wait for it to complete it completed. And uh, it says it's almost done. So let me just uh, go back go back here. What I'll do is uh, I'll click on this and uh, I'll go back to the Arduino OTA here and I should be having a other one, a sync demo here, right? Yes, and I have one file here. This is a sync bin here, open this and uh, it's started uploading here. Pretty much uh, quick to go with upload here. So see this, it has been done. It means that everything is working really, really well. So this is uh, pretty good to go ahead. And uh, with this way, you see this here, we're able to do this update uh, directly from this console here, and it really works amazing. So here, uh, you can make some slight changes out there, like uh, based on what are the different things you have into it. Maybe we don't want this to have this thing. You want to have some nice looking web page. You can do this here. You can get that thing being done out there. Uh, pretty much simple and easy way ahead. I'll try to make record one more video. How can you come uh, get your HTML web pages uh, passed here? Or how can you load in HTML web pages by storing your HTML web page and the CSS into this particular thing out here? so that you can uh, load those beautiful web pages also according to your styles from this. So that would really help you in doing the provisioning of your device and so on. So that will also help you in getting those things being done. So you can always check that out. And to know more about the web development, if you're not aware, you can go ahead and check out my video, a course on uh, web development out there. And you can also, I'll be providing a link in the comment section for a discount because you're a part of this IoT out there. So let me know in the comment section if you're able to do this and implement this for any of your project or any of such. I'll be happy to read your comments. Until the next video, take care.